Hello everyone, in this video I want to discuss the notion of abstract dot product. And uh, in order to discuss the notion of abstract dot product, we're going to talk about vector spaces. So let's uh, talk, a uh, talk a little bit about vector space. So what is a vector space? Uh, before you know from like your classes, from basic algebra or from linear algebra, uh, that uh, we have like actual vectors, a vector is a line segment. And what is the definition of vector? is directed line segment. And you know, if you have two uh, vectors, you can add them up, you will get the third one. So, uh, and all these vectors, they are satisfied some properties. So, what we do in mathematics, sometimes we're forgetting about our objects, and we just keep in the properties. And you ask, are there is another type of objects that are going to be satisfied with these properties? So why not, instead of our vectors, considering some functions? So a is going to be a of x, and b vector is going to be vector which is a function b of x. In the same way, I'm adding these two vectors and getting another vector. I can add these two functions and get another function. And I'm going to ask myself, are these functions going to behave the same way as these vectors behave? If yes, this yes indeed means this one is going to be vector space. So vector space is a generalization of regular vectors. So, and we have that product here. And how are we going to define that product over here? So we're saying if V is a vector space, so any absolute vector space, then we define our dot product as a map that takes a pair of two vectors, uh, of two elements in our vector space, and send this pair to some R. And we call this, uh, uh, this is an uh, abstract dot product. If it satisfies, uh, if it satisfies the following axioms. So the first axiom uh, which is need to satisfy, if you're gonna take element X with itself, we're going to say that our dot product is bigger or equal than zero. And the dot product of x with itself is going to be equal to zero if and only if x equals to zero. Okay. Our second uh, step, second axiom is if I'm taking the, and this is true, I forgot to say, uh, I'm going to edit over here. This is true for any x in my vector space. So it means if I'm going to take any element x, this is true. In the same way I'm saying for any element x and y from my vector space, I can interchange my x and y. Okay, and this is also true for any x and y in V. And the third one, I'm required that my, uh, this function is going to be linear corresponding to my first component. So if I'm going to take some constant c1 times x1 plus x2, y2, then this is going to be equals to c1 x1, y2 plus x2 and y2. Where, and this is true for any c1 uh, because it's constant from my reals, and for any x1, uh, 1, x2, and y2 from vector spaces. So, if I'm defining in some way my scalar, uh, my dot product as a map uh, from uh, vector space times vector space into reals in some way, if I'm going to check all the three properties, it means I'm going to get a dot product. So, as we discussed in another video, let's take our vector space to be equals to R2. So what I want to do, I want to check that the dot product that we know before is actually yes, is our dot product and satisfy this definition. So, and you remember, if A belongs to R2, it means just my A have coordinates A1 and A2. So it means like, uh, this is my vector A with coordinates A1 and A2. This is X, Y. And this is called a vector space R2. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to define 
my dot product uh, x and y as x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. And this is true, why? Because I'm assuming that my vector x has coordinates uh, x1 and x2, and my vector y has coordinates y1 and y2. So I'm taking any two elements that belong to R2, they have coordinates, and I'm just uh, multiplying this uh, corresponding uh, first component and adding the second component multiplier. And what I want to do, I want to check that this, the way how we define the product going to satisfy all these axioms. So let's check the first axiom. For the first axiom, I want to show that x to the x bigger or equals than zero. Yes, indeed. If I'm going to take element x to the x, uh, the product x with itself, it's going to be equal x1 times x1, so it's going to be x1 squared plus x2 times x2, so it's going to be x2 squared. And we know this expression in the reals is bigger or equals than zero. So the first part we're done. The second part is kind of trivial. If x, uh, let's show, if x is zero, it means uh, then x is exactly going to be zero vector. x is going to be equal to zero, zero. And then you're going to take the dot product of x with x itself, I will get zero. So we show like this direction. Opposite direction is also trivial. Uh, we know that x x is equals to zero. So according to this formula, I have that x1 squared plus x2 squared equals to zero. But this is only possible if x1 and x2 are zero. Why? Because if at least one of these numbers is different from one zero, the left hand side is never going to be equals to zero. Because I cannot have that I have positive number, I'm going to add another positive and I will get zero. So from here it follows that x equals to zero. So first axioms done, check. What about second axiom? I want to show if I have x, y, it equals to y, x, for any y and x. And yes, indeed, uh, if I have my x, y, it equals x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2, but we know that real numbers are commutative, so I can rewrite this as y1 times x1 plus y2 times x2. So it's equals to y, uh, the product of y and x. Yeah, so the second property, check. And what about the last property? The last property I want to show that my dot product is linear. So I want to show that if I will take c of x, uh, let's say plus y and z, is when x, y, z are all two-dimensional vectors. So I will get that c of x, z, plus uh, y, z. And the variable coordinates is x1, x2, y1, y2, and z1, z2. And yes, indeed, if I'm going to take this uh, c, I'm going to use different color, the one. If I will take uh, c, x, plus y, z, it's going to be equals to uh, c x1 plus y1 times z1 plus uh, c x2 plus y2 times z2. And from here we'll get uh, c x1 times z1 plus uh, c x2 times z2. And this first part is going to give us exactly this one, right? Because I'm going to factor C and I'm going to get x1 times z1 plus x2 times z2. So I've got my first factor. And for the second factor, we'll have y1 z1 plus uh, y2 z2. And from here, we'll get that it's actually equal C, x, and z plus y and z. So yes, in the third one, axiom is checked. 
So the way how we define our our scalar product, oh not scalar, our dot product, we can see it satisfy all axioms. So yes, this dot product is actually satisfy uh, the notion of abstract dot product. Another thing that we can discuss. We can show that also linear corresponding to this component. Why? Because we're going to use a second axiom. And if we have that y, uh, we've written y is combination of some factors, you're going to uh, change y and x. You're going to change y and x. You're going to, since uh, the first component is linear, you're going to expand it. And after you expand it, you're going to change them back. And you're gonna add them up, and so you're gonna show that uh, this actually is linear. Thank you.